Welcome .NET Enthusiast. Today we are stepping outside the box to explore a fresh and in innovative way of achieving SWAT guest search in Blazor hybrid application. We all know that .NET Mary offers the amazing SWAT view control in XAML. What if I told you we can achieve the same functionality or uh, close without writing a single line of XAML? Instead, we are diving into the world of Blazor Hybrid, combining the power of JavaScript interrupts with Blazor seamless UI capabilities. So whether you are looking to build a highly customized UI or just curious to break free from traditional XAML, this approach will open up new possibilities for your hybrid applications. So by the end of this video, you would have a fully interactive swipe view implemented with JavaScript or inside your Blazor Hybrid project. So let's dive in. But before we do that, let me quickly remind you, if you are loving this content and want to stay ahead in your .NET and Blazor journey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash the like button. It helps support the channel and keeps me motivated to bring you more awesome tutorials like this. And also, don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss out any update. All right, I have Blazor hybrid project created. I have my emulator also ready, as you can see from here. Now, um, since you're going to be using that with JS, there's this JS library which can help us achieve it. That is hammer.js. So we're going to install that. So we're going to um, grab that JS, um, keep it in our project source. Then we're going to make a reference to it. And then we create our JS script. Let's get into it. Now, before we can do that, um, I'll put the link where you can get the JS file downloaded in the video description. So that is a JS I'm talking about, hammer.min.js. So we can just click on this. And now we're going to have this. So we can grab all this, just copy this, and open any um, test editor, paste it, save it, copy that, and then drop it here. So you can see that here we are having two files created. We have the hammer.min.js. Uh, that is a JS library that we um, copied. Now we have an empty script, as you can see from here. That is what we're going to be using to run our script. So let's grab these um, files. Let's grab them. Let's go to our source solution. And in our WW folder, we're going to paste them here. Let's go to index. And now let's link these two files in the index.html. L, um, file so here we're going to drag this to reduce him to the script now let's go in and write the script for um, this one let's go and write a js script So when you look at this, we are having two functions. One is going to add the swap handler and one is going to restore it. And you can see from here, we are adding a transformation uh, whereby we're going to translate on the X axis. 
aside from that we're going to transform um, with a transition and we're adding three seconds easing out so aside from that we're going to add a class which is visible it's going to make the thing visible but in case you want to um, restore it means you want to revert it and now we have the same method that we're going to revert it now you see each method takes in i think um, four parameters we have the swap item id which is going to be a div id we have the button is going to be the button that you want to display in there and we have .NET object reference so we can um, make any uh, we can call um, in case you want to do that but for now we are not using this .NET object reference maybe uh, we can take it off for now the next thing that we're going to be doing here is we're going to create a component so we have the components created already we're going to be using this hope component um, for this demonstration So now you can see that from here we are having a simple div um, element uh, with the id and class as you can see from swap container and a swap item that is what we're going to swap to left and that is the exactly the the div element we're going to happen on now as soon as we do this here we want to show this so there is a button so we swipe to left then we want to show this button you see now we have this button so we can in case you want to perform an action we can um uh, um, wired up so as you can see we have a definition for each of the button um, events registered over here okay now when you look at this we are canceling this item in case i click on cancel then what do you want to do because by then we are swiping this to left so you want to restore and that's exactly what we are doing because we created a script function that is restore whereby instead of translating we want to set everything to default that is to zero so you want to do that and then we call that method in here that is a cancel item and then when the page renders on after um, render is saying we want to add this you can see when you check the script we need to wire it up to the swipe left so when we start the page after it has been rendered for the first time we want to activate this so that you can swap and in case you want to swap you want to translate it you want to move it away negative 150 uh, pixels and also we need to add this transition of this with 0 0.3 seconds okay so that is what we're doing now in order for us to see how beautiful this is going to look like we need to add some css to it so let's use css isolation since we're going to create a css file which will be used only by this home component where we're going to create this uh, we're going to have this swap so in the component folder where we have these pages we're going to create another um, file which is going to be a css and that's going to be home.razor.css so it can be used by only this home component so let's do that
All right, so I need to check here. There's a little bit of CSS style that we are adding. You can modify this to suit your own. And um, what it matters most is the how we, we are creating our transitions and the opacity. So we see the divs that we created, this is going to be for the container. This is going to be for the inner um, div element where we're going to swipe. So when we are swiping, we want to um, transform with this easing out with um, 0 0.3 second and we have this at the action button so you can decide to skip all these and use a bootstrap a class straightforward or you can also maintain this or even add your own css as well then we have this an action button um, when it's visible we want to make sure we have the opacity set to one and now the index is one making it visible um, for everyone then we have a delete button a cancel button we set both background colors red and these are the styles that we are applying to it when it is hovered this is what you want to set the color for this cancel button and now all these the classes that we have created here when you check our home component um, we have the name reference up here as a class so we have a delete button cancel button swap item and now swipe container good so let's run this and now let's go and check this up. So I'm going to run it through the Android and now let's see. All right, so we have our app ready. Now we're going to swap to the left and check and see if you're going to have the buttons displayed. And as soon as we click on the buttons, you're going to have this restored. Okay, so we have it. Now that is, that is gone. Then we have delete and canceled, right? So if I click on delete, you know, we did not do anything. When you check this delete from the home component, if I click, if I put a breakpoint, this will be hit. Delete this, and you can see it is hit. Now if I click on cancel, this should be restored. So cancel should be restored. So we can also swipe it again. Then we have it, cancel, can swipe it, cancel, swipe it, cancel. So you can see that here we are also achieving um, our swipe view similar to what we have in the .NET Mavi feature. So if you don't want to use that, you can also use this. And now with this, you have an absolute control. So you can modify the CSS, you can modify the JS file, you can modify the element and undo anything that you want to do with it i'll leave the source code in the video description so you can go there and grab it and also try to modify it and make it more awesome <laughs> all right so that is it for this if you want to um, get more of this content like this blazer hybrid project and also a blazer itself project then make sure you stay tuned and and subscribe and also like this video if you have learned something until then take care and i'll see you in the next video